spend it painting the roof of the boot. It's a job that's needed doing for a while. I've been putting it off because I uh, really don't like doing it. I've done it once before three years ago. Um, it's, just, it's just not enjoyable. But we've got some different tools to help us out this time. And hopefully that'll make it a bit easier. Done a lot of research, looked on YouTube to see how other people are doing it, and we've got a plan of how we're going to do it. It's it's not going to be the best job. Obviously, we don't have the resources. We can't put um, the boat into a shed or a police tunnel, and we don't have the time. And it's just me working on it. So I think we'll get a, a reasonable job for a week of work and one person doing it. So first job: clear the roof and remove all the fuskings. So not long into this job, and we've come across our first problem: these cable entries in the roof here. One cable gland and then two of these plug socket deck fittings and there's a fair bit of rust around there so that needs to be cleaned up and as I was taking this one out all three of the stainless steel screws holding it in place snapped. So this is why I took the ceiling down in the bedroom a few weeks ago to see what was underneath. I was suspecting that this might need replacing and I just wanted to know where the cables were coming from, how much room there was, how much water there was to get ideas about what what we might do about it because there's also some other cables that I'd like to bring up the front here that we don't have any room for at the moment and that we can't put any more through through the roof so what I'm thinking about is putting in a, a gooseneck or an, an inverted U-bend that will allow more cables and keep it all dry um, yeah, and hopefully be easier to take off and get rid of the rust. In the meantime, I'm going to crack on with the sanding. Wow. Good? Yeah, this is good. Um, there's next to no dust. I'm thinking maybe the better way to do it is to um, use the grinder. I don't try and work out where all those places are and mark them maybe with a piece of chalk. Hmm. Um, take that back to bare steel with the grinder because then that will leave an edge of where the, the old paint sort of steps down that will need sanding. So it, it shouldn't take too much to, to get it into good good condition for painting. Hmm. I might get the grinder now and start doing this because I just don't want to... It's a waste of my time and a waste of our sanding pads if I'm sanding it once and then grinding it and sanding it again. Yeah, right. So just the rusted bits or rusty bits? Yeah, just areas that you can see where there's some surface rust. Mm -hmm. Surveying the damage after day one, probably about four and a half hours working on the roof. Um, I've scraped most of the roof and sanded just the, the front section there. It's not too bad. The new sanding kit and the disc that I have on the grinder makes a big difference. No going back now. It's the end of day two. After doing the sanding that I did yesterday, I had to go back and scrape a lot of it anyway because the, the top coat that we'd put on three years ago was just too thin. Um, it's just peeling off everywhere. Um, learning lessons though. We, we thinned the paint, the top coat down last time with, I um, can't remember whether it was 5% or 10% of Oterol, um, which is, I thought, meant to make it stick better. Um, but it hasn't worked, <laughs> and most of it, certainly the front section, has just literally peeled off. So I've had to go back and scrape everything, and then start again with the sanding. Um, the trick is to try and be zen about it all, and to not rush it. Um, so I've I've divided the boat into two halves, and then into about 15 sections on each side. Um, I'm also setting a timer for 20 minutes, so I'll, I'll do work for 20 minutes and then stop and have a rest, which seems to help a bit. Um, yeah, if you start rushing it, then yeah, you don't get a very good job. <laughs> and you'll find yourself here again in three years. I don't want to do that. So if it takes me all week just to prep it, then so be it. 
I don't think it will. Maybe by tomorrow. <laughs> like every job on this boat, it takes a lot longer than, than I imagine. And I'm still not learning, I should just think, oh, it's going to take me two days, and then say, tell Aaron and the world, it's going to take me four or five days. <laughs> it's going to be closer to the truth. It's the end of day three, and a whole lot more scraping and sanding today. And feels like it's never going to end. I think I've probably said this before, but it's almost the end of the, the scraping. Less than a quarter left to sand as well. And um, we'll be ready to give it a wash and treat the rust with back tan. Oh, and the rails. That needs a lot of sand as well. Big job. <laughs> Keep thinking, I wonder who. I should have hired a scabbler and taken the whole thing back to bare steel, but I don't know. It would have been quick for this bit, but then getting off the paint around the railings and between the railings and the edge would have been a really hard job. I think we also would have had to take out the hatches and... Ah, it's... yeah. This is, this is how we've decided to do it this time. Many different ways to skin a cat, right? And the rust is always going to come back. This... Uh, uh, we're redoing this because the paint was literally falling off, but there's no more rust than there was last time, so we did a pretty good job at controlling the rust last time, and we didn't even use back tan or, or take it back to bare metal as much as we should have, or put enough primer on, probably. So, if we can get a coating that looks after the rust this time and stays for more than three years, um, I'll be happy trying to do the best with limited time, no access to well, no access to a road anywhere nearby to, to get um, any tools delivered, um, no shore power, so we're, real, we're doing all of this on solar, one week's leave and also trying to spend some time with the family. Yeah. I don't want to do this again in another three years. That's the cable glands that was had the TV aerial going through. Uh, the navigation lights and deck lights. And this is our new deck fitting so we can get more cables through. 50mm um, aperture so we can run loads of cables through that. Um, just want to bring back obviously the lights, probably the TV antenna although we never use it. Um, also I'd like to put the solar panel cables through there. The aerial for the Wi-Fi modem and I'd like to bring the horn up to the front at the mast. At the moment the horn sits um, at the stern next to the wheelhouse door. Makes more sense for it to be at the front so we can put more cable through for that. We don't have to drill any more holes through the deck which is great so we're going to... Except that hole. Except that <laughs> hole. Well, <laughs> yeah, we need to drill a bigger hole. <laughs> One bigger hole so we have to drill no more. Hmm going to make use of that hole already in this and probably sit it about there going to the side that way the center line of the boat is actually right there so if we can bring the cables out to the side and center that'll be fine and at the moment our mast folds forward so three screws I need to tap some holes here for the screws once once I've created the, the hole for the, the main pipe and it's off with these. Which is great. <laughs> the hatch. Mm. So you're going to put foam on the inside of this a bit like with the wheelhouse roof, aren't you? Yeah, I'll glue some close cell foam in there. Put a layer of ply on the inside again. This has been a hell of a job. <laughs> but definitely worthwhile getting it off. There's quite a bit of rust on the, the inside of the, the hatch that need to deal with and the wood was getting all rotten and mouldy so it needed to go. And we were having saucepans on the floor yeah, <laughs> because the water was, was just running through. Yeah. So 
another design fault of this boat, I think. There's not many, it's built really well, but there's just a couple of small oversights where the water comes in, where the water, that allow the water to come in. One of them's the, the gas locker. Um, and the other one is this, so the, the hatch sits over the top of this and slides on these brass rails. And there's a little rubber sealer sort of thing that goes up there and the roof of the hatch comes along. The problem is this bit here isn't sealed. So it rains, water comes down onto this rail, it runs along, nothing to stop it, comes inside, either runs down there, comes along, runs down there. It can run directly off the, off the front of the rail and outside the boat, but and some of it might do that, but uh, a good deal of it <laughs> comes inside and then makes contact with the wood and um, rots that ends up on the carpet. Not great. So, I've got a piece of aluminium that I'm going to cut to shape using that same angle, um, but then taking it a little bit longer so that it will come across and fill in that gap there. And then we'll use some of the, the quick steel I've been using on the, the roof of the wheelhouse actually to, to seal that in tight. We'll have a, a dead stop for the water there, but that's only going to be as good as the, the thickness of this rail. So then we'll also drill a hole through here. There's a little drain hole for that section, and then countersink it, I think. So that any water that does pool has a way to drop out and carry on without coming inside. That's the plan. Hmm. Thanks for tuning in to Five Knots Cruising. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps us to get our video out to more viewers. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions and ideas, so please drop us a line either on our Instagram page or YouTube channel.